that's really yeah that's really interesting so i suppose there's sort of two sides to this you're coming at this not on, like there's two benefits you're coming at this not only from not having had a solid cybersecurity background which is great but you're also coming to this as a startup and the real benefit of that is you can move significantly faster you can actually be really focused about fixing that problem really specifically um and, and we find this because when i'm not doing the CISO talk things. I'm CEO of a security vendor myself, and I find that you know our ability to innovate and to move and to, to is significantly faster than our competitors. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, uh, we don't have the baggage, and we don't have we don't have the have we don't have this issue where you know we're not having to create massive headaches if we decide that we want to adjust lines of code whereas the, you know we don't have all of this this technical debt as it were that that's going to create problems for us if we decide that we want to try and add new features add new <laughs> add new widgets yeah. into our products whatever so there is it's definitely that's that that advantage of being a startup is you can move significantly quicker as well and i think obviously you know the technologies we're using are probably um make it easier for us to innovate and move faster whereas some of our competitors are still using they're still operating in the same way they were sort of like 10 years plus ago or whatever and and it means that they can't move as quickly as i've even if they had you know even if they wanted to they couldn't because of the way that they've they've architected their solution as well yeah i think there's, there's certainly some kind of native benefits you get as a startup or right? like you mentioned like the, Tons, the yeah. focus like the focus of nothing else right um and, and you know being able to you know, use kind of modern technologies much faster, right? I think mm -hmm. like as much as, you know, our, our product engineering team deserve a lot of credit, but I, but I also think like a, a dynamic is also just the architectural shifts, right? Mm -hmm. You know, most companies, it's uh, almost every company that started 10 years ago was not built for the cloud, right? Absolutely really right. built for, Absolutely you know, right. on-premise, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. on-premise deployments, right? And a lot yeah. of those solutions have kind of you know, they've taken the on-premise and put them in their own data center. But I think that, um, you know, if you're starting a company in 2020, Right. You're, you're obviously going to build natively on Azure or AWS, Absolutely. right? And exactly. uh, I think a lot of companies just have, you know, they have 20 years worth of kind of history and customers, right? And That's just, hard, you know, just architecturally harder for them to move forward and kind of exactly. access, you know, some of the new new benefits of these cloud, you know, uh, architectures. So I think that's, you know, that's like a structural thing, right? And, you know, um, you know, outside just like, you know, is our, is our team more focused or kind of better machine learning you know, mm. people, but um, I think there, there's that, that struc structural difference, right? When it comes to just, you know, the architectures you can implement faster. Indeed. And I think one of the really big benefits of operating as a startup is I think the longer you, you're going, the, the more you live in this echo chamber, like, and the more that you, it, it, the harder it is to really, to uh, really figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's very, very, very difficult to kind of break out of that echo chamber. Whereas, you know, coming to this as a fresh, relatively speaking, you know, you, you don't have that. And that, that's a massive benefit as well. Um, yeah. you, you know, you, you, again, you, you have the ability to constantly step back and say, well, this is, this, is this really fixing this biggest problem? Like, <laughs> like without the, without the, you know, kind of, worrying too much about you know whether it fits into the 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 verbiage that you're using or the marketing terms that you're using or like whether it fits into this box you can come at this objectively and i think that that I, again i really think it's a big benefit of the startup yeah. as well you know I'll, mm. I'll give you a i'll give you a controversial take on something that i that i think has really surprised me right um and i, I worry that the industry you know the the, the cyber screen is going a slippery slope in this direction and that mm. is phishing training right I think right. that, um, you know, I was, you know, again, I, I'm a, to I was a total amateur, you know, three years ago, and I was actually quite surprised about how people talked about, you know, phishing training, right? Um, you know, we, we don't have a phishing, you know, training product today. So just not, not trying to be commercial here, but no, 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 yeah. one thing that was surprising, I so said, there, there is real value there for kind of, you know, education and compliance, but I, I really feel like the slippery slope that you're talking about that the industry is going down is really relying on phishing training is kind of like the backstop to stop phishing attacks, Right. And for me, like, you know, again, when I first kind of learned about this, it really, it was really surprising. I'm like, so, you know, I talked to like a manufacturing company and they're like, hey, you know, yeah, like uh, part of our team are, you know, people working on the, you know, in the factory, part of their job, you know, they spend a couple minutes a day to just review phishing emails. And it's like, you know, do you really want your employees to be experts at like analyzing URLs, right? Is that really their no. job? And I feel like, you know, 
people have kind of given up on software in some ways, and they've kind of almost like pushed the burden, you know, to to humans to kind of do this kind of last line of defense when it comes to you know phishing attacks. And so I like, yeah, maybe maybe I'm totally off my rocker here, but I feel like that's an example where there's been a bit of an echo chamber. I was like, yep, that's just the best practice. That's what you do. And I think there's kind of a, the industry's that's given it. up on like software is solving that problem. Like why shouldn't it, like what other part of cybersecurity do you rely on humans to be like the yeah. judge to stop that last line of defense, right? You're totally right. So I feel like right. that's an area that needs some yeah. innovation. I totally agree. I totally agree. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Exactly. And I think one of the things generally I struggle with as well is that, you know, the, sp- the speed in which people are coming up and the sophistication of these phishing attacks. I, I mean, like all the training in the world, like, that's right, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, you know, they're, they're changing like an app, the app, the, the app to a slightly, di- you know, to the different uh, ASCII character. And, and, and uh, like, it, how how could you not how would you spot that like you literally couldn't spend enough time studying to to prevent yourself from these types of things like i mean i guess you could reduce it but no, i mean, i i i think we've got to be very very careful we've got to be very very careful i don't think that's the answer and, and if you look um, at like the i mean if you look at like the you know the the top 1% of attacks that cause 80% of the problems right it's mm. not like you know a typo domain or like you know grammatical errors, right? It's like right. people have broken into your coworker's account or your boss's account or your yeah. vendor's account, and they're like you know sending you information that's part of your job or that's sending it. fake voices, that's right? And it. so like that's it. You know you can't like I you know again there is some real value there, so I don't mean to kind of beat up on that part no, of the industry, no, right? Because mm-hmm. you know we do it ourselves because we think there's real value. But I do mm. think that there's um, like yeah, just the things we're really kind of training and protecting against, like. I don't know if that's the full solution and the, you know, it's almost, it's over like oversimplified. Doesn't That's not the real attacks that, you know, we're saying, no. at least in our product. So I think there's some, I, just, I think like people need to like believe again, you know, once again, believe in like, you know, software's ability to like, mm. you mm. know, kind of automate some of this work. And, you know, that that's ultimately the promise of AI, right. To like, you know, help take decisions that are, you know, human judgments and kind of, you know, imitate them with high accuracy through, you know, through technology. Mm. So I think that, you know, I think there's an opportunity for us to make improvements across, you know, many of these areas of cybersecurity.